Hey everyone, welcome to this new moon slash partial solar eclipse sidereal astrology forecast for the new moon on Saturday, April 30th, 2022. All right, so uh, yes, a new beginning to the lunar cycle, and in this case, a partial solar eclipse. Uh, it won't be one that's visibly or anything like that, but it is uh, astrologically considered a solar eclipse because of how close it is to, in this case, the North Node. So anytime we have a new or full moon next to the nodes, uh, we consider that an eclipse, and in this case, uh, very important changes to our life path, more significant changes than just a regular new moon in this case. So it is gonna be in sidereal Aries, if you expect me to say Taurus just then, be sure to check out the link down below for more information. We are using the visible sky on this channel, which is very different from mainstream astrology. All right, so Aries the Ram, it's all about thrusting things forward, taking initiative. It is the first sign of the zodiac, which deals with beginnings and those first initial steps with things. So any uh, new intentions around this is fantastic. The new moon is going to be in more erratic and also freedom-oriented Uranus. So there is definitely this sort of spark with this new moon that is uh, great for anything that involves uh, inducing some change, uh, getting outside of our comfort zone, challenging our own or the collective status quo, really getting that individual self-expression and that excitement going uh, is great with this new moon. There's no major uh, aspects with it, uh, just that conjunction and also a sextile up to Mars, really just adding to this energy since Mars is already the ruler of Aries um, and in Aquarius, Uranus's sign is really just adding to that uh, erratic, fiery energy with this uh, conjunction. All right, so let's go and take a look at all of this here in more detail when we return. Alrighty, so here is the chart for this new moon slash partial solar eclipse. Uh, the exact time will be in the evening of the Americas. Um, if you do want to make that calculation for wherever you are in the world. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, it will be uh, the day surrounding Saturday, as we do typically feel the energy a couple or a few days before and after. But um, yeah, Saturday around the later part of the Americas, uh, 1811, we're using topocentric, so it's a bit different, but 1811 Eastern time, if you want to make that calculation. And as you can see here, we are using the actual size of the constellations on this channel called True Sidereal Astrology, and therefore the signs are different. The, the, the signs have changed uh, in, in, in relation to mainstream. So in mainstream, you might be hearing this new moon in Taurus, uh, but if you do look up at the visible sky, or in this case, you use a planetarium software, since we're talking about the sun here, uh, you will see it right in the middle of Aries. So if you're new to True Sidereal, definitely check out the link down below for more information, but essentially we're using the visible sky on this channel. All right, so yes, new moon is a time of new beginnings. As we approach the Saturday time, it is the ending of the previous lunar cycle, which had a lot more to do with very different energy of Pisces. And we still have activity in Pisces, of course, Jupiter, Neptune, and Venus are still here as well as Chiron. But Pisces is more of the ending energies of coming to more peace. It's more about spirituality. It's more of that inner world, right? And soul world and spiritual world. But Aries is the first step out of that, which is emerging out of the womb, let's say, or out of the ethers or out of the spiritual world into the more physical world, into the side that deals more with things that require confidence and assertiveness and identity, right? It is that first emergence where we do become aware of self, and our needs and what we can do to pursue these things. And so Aries the Ram is all about that, using the hind legs in the constellation to thrust forward, to ram things, you know, with the ram. And um, Aries is very symbolic of this. What can we now set some new intentions with, with this new beginning, which will take time. The new moon, this partial solar eclipse, this is the lowest energy of the lunar cycle, right? So it's just slowly building momentum. But this whole lunar month, basically the month of May in the Gregorian calendar uh, is great for this initiating energy. How can we set intentions to initiate things, perhaps cultivate more of that stronger sense of ego, of identity, of who we are, of what we want, of our desires, right? And what actions 
what we can do to pursue that, right? And set intentions and goals and all this kind of thing. So it certainly is on the more active side. It is a fire. It is the first fire sign of the Zodiac. And so it's all about that initial step, that initiative, and really connecting with the self and the identity to have the confidence, to have the assertiveness, to have the strong ego in order to pursue these things that are important to us. Now, of course, these things can be spiritual things. They can be personal things. They can be business. They could be whatever it is. Um, but uh, nonetheless, as the underlayer, there is, uh, in this case, the energy requiring that initiative and action. So great to do this. Great to set intentions with this. Now, the main aspect uh, is Uranus. So we do have Uranus, who's been here already for the past at least few years uh, in Aries, which has been really shaking things up collectively, which has been a lot of this more assertive and you know active energy around change, around freedom, around independence, right? These kinds of things has very much been activated and the new moon is activating this, right? In the, uh, in the uh, collective sense and also in the surrounding years sense, right? In the decade sense. And so uh, anything around this individual self-expression, I think is gonna be a huge hallmark of this new moon, both collectively and personally. So Uranus fundamentally is about listening to our excitement, I like to think of Uranus as one of the two planets uh, that deal with the connection to our true self, the other one being Neptune, right? These are the most outer planets here, and so they're very deep into the unconscious, into the psyche, that in the Jungian sense, we would say is a closer connection to the self, the whole self, the true self, right? But they are in the shadow, and of course, they are challenging to work with because they're more unconscious. But nonetheless, um, Uranus is the side of the shadow of the unconscious that wants to do things because we're excited, because you know our true self is calling us to do it. It feels very freeing, very liberating, right? Very exciting. And so this is the kind of energy we're talking about here. And so any new intentions that is about connecting to that true self that does want to have more freedom, more change, more excitement, wants to healthfully disrupt things, right? Hopefully con constructively and with awareness, but uh, nonetheless wants to shake things up. It's very important to have change in life, to be progressive, to be a visionary, to be willing to challenge existing structures with balance, of course. But nonetheless, it is a very important energy of life. And this is very symbolic of that Uranus. So as you can see, it's very much activated. It's uh, a nice step in the right direction in the yearly sense, in the decade sense. And so anything that is about that fiery, assertive, with individual self-expression, with excitement, right, towards some change. Now, this is, of course, getting outside of our own comfort zone as well. I want to make that clear. The challenge of Uranus is that the areas we really don't want to make change are sometimes the areas we need to make change with, right? It's very important, of course, to have security and safety and comfort. And, so, you know, we don't want to rock the boat with every area. And typically not the area Uranus is transiting. Usually, you know, I mean, as a default, at least, this is the area that needs to be shaken up. So it's the area we probably don't want to, at least not initially. And so it is good to, again, get outside that comfort zone and challenge our own status quo in whatever area of life this is activated. You can, of course, check your sidereal chart at masteringthezodiac.com. See where Aries is. Wherever Aries is in your chart, that is what's getting shaken up. But nonetheless, whatever intention you want to set, around listening to your excitement, whatever new you're feeling emerging out of this new moon that is about some change, some excitement. It's going to require initiative on your part. It's a fan <clears throat> fantastic month to set those intentions, fantastic energy to work with this lunar cycle. All right, so that's really it. It's very, very uh, straightforward because now once we start to look at Mars, who is sextiling this uh, new moon, we just see a lot of repeating energies, okay? So first of all, Mars is the ruler of Aries. So yes, it is very important to look at Mars for this new moon because whatever he's doing is gonna give us a good indication of what this new beginning is about. But in, in the case of what he's doing, he's actually in Uranus's sign of Aquarius, sidereally. And so the way we are taking action right now, or at least again, the good way, you know, the, the balanced way, the in nature way, the seasonal way to take action right now is towards that individual self-expression of Aquarius to constructively challenge the status quo, right? To connect to our visionary side, 
right? To perhaps do things that involve connecting to something greater than ourselves, right? Query is the water bearer. It's all about contributing or being a part of something greater. So it is naturally the collective sign, right? So connecting to the collective, it can be very intuitive, right? Uh, very, you know, f have a lot of foresight, you know, Mars and Aquarius can have a lot of foresight, a lot of vision for the future, right? So all this sort of progressive visionary energy, again, double confirmed here, certainly available. And in this case, how we're taking that action collectively at the moment. But the sextile is supporting it. It is an opening for it. And it's nice to see that uh, symbiotic relationship with Mars during this new moon in uh, Aries. And of course, since it is that partial solar eclipse, you know, it's important to just add to the fact that this is a uh, change. You know, these, this new beginning really is, again, a new beginning in, in a yearly sense. And so it has a lot to do with new beginnings with our life path. The North Node is all about the new direction, right? And so any new moon or full moon next to it is always a shift of that direction, of that life path. And so this is actually the first new moon, or in this case, solar eclipse, that is uh, with the North Node in Aries of this part of the cycle part of this 18 year cycle with the notes. And so uh, this is the uh, first one and we will have more of course every uh, roughly six months in this uh, eclipse season every year with the north node now getting closer and more and more into Aries. Okay, so it is the first energy of this from the life path sense that it really is, I would say for at least the next year, year and a half uh, to cultivate more of that assertive, independent, right active side of things we're going to notice probably more themes around this to develop it uh, but of course setting those intentions is great as well so north node in aries now um, you know and increasing as the north node gets further into here and the first uh, solar eclipse with the north node in aries uh, in this part of the cycle all right, everyone. So yes, that is the new moon in a nutshell. Uh, very, very straightforward. A lot of confirmation, a lot of things pointing towards the same direction, which is really the fire and the electricity, the fire of Aries, right? That passion, that first impulse, that getting things started. It's still the first sign of the zodiac. So again, it's just about that initiative, just about getting that ball moving but certainly is about cultivating that side of ourselves that wants to take action, wants to take initiative, right? Pursue our desires, our needs, right? Now Uranus is, uh, of course, very erratic energy. It's the electricity here. And so great to connect to that more unorthodox side, challenging the status quo, that individual self-expression, the weird side, right? Thinking about things differently, doing things differently. Uranus is very much like the scientist, right? Flipping things up upside down, throwing random things together, see what happens. It's very, you know, very good to experiment and try different things and innovate and have that individual self-expression. And fundamentally, I would say, listen to that excitement uh, coming out of this uh, Uranus energy and to perhaps set new intentions with things that are about incorporating more freedom or a greater connection to our true self uh, with these new beginnings. And of course, the sextile to Mars is really just confirming a lot of that. All right, so everyone have a fantastic new moon. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to click the like button if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're not yet signed up for MTZ Insiders, it is a newsletter where you do get this video and other videos like it released first before YouTube. So do check out the link down below for that. But have a great uh, new moon, everyone. Thank you again for all of your support. And I'll see you all next time for the next astrology forecast. Take care.